Well, hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm gonna to be diving back into a little brush show. I haven't used it in forever, but I thought it would be fun to do. So this one is one that came out way too bright and way too messy. So I used some month long ink and went back into it and did some brushwork practice. So even if you're not going to use a painting, just keep working on that piece of paper until it's dead. <laughs> this one is another one where the colors came out better. I used stuff that was more subtle, but I tested a little corner of this to remind myself of what color the Mont Blanc ink changes with bleach. And just for fun, I tested a little spot over here on the Brusho alone and found out that Brusho works to erase the, the color of Brusho. I never knew that before. So it was kind of a fun little thing that I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't played around with those pieces of paper where I had paintings that I wasn't happy with. And this is one of those reasons why I tell you, keep working that piece of paper until it tells you something you didn't know before. Just keep trying. There's a lot of different ways you can use that bleach effect. Think about stars in a galaxy background. You could either dot them in with, you know, maybe a glass dip pen or something, or you could try spritzing. You know, if you put some bleach into a spray bottle, just make sure you stay safe when you use things like bleach, etc. Or you can use it to wipe color back out of an area that you got some brush in that you didn't want it in. It mostly, for the few colors that I tested, does seem to eventually go all the way back to white. But you'll have to experiment with that. I mixed it half and half in order to use for a painting. Because what I did find was that I got a really harsh, sharp line from straight bleach. So 50-50 seemed like it was going to be a good bet. For this painting that I'm doing, I'm using three colors only. Yellow ochre is the first. And I painted the sky just right up to the buildings so that I could put the sky alone in there and sprinkled some of this yellow ochre. And Brusho is a watercolor powder. And that means it's got all the colors that it would take to make, say, a yellow ochre. And it breaks out all these little tiny crystals of pigment. That's why you get all those different colors. And it's kind of cool, you get really interesting effects. If you don't like the effects of this with getting this kind of granulated texture, then you could use something like Color Burst. It's kind of the smooth sister of Brusho. I really like the textures that it makes, and I like the colors in the Brusho collection better than the colors in the Color Burst, but my card maker friends may well like the Color Burst, even if it's a little more expensive than Brusho. So I added some gray to this, believe it or not, that is gray. But when you put it down as heavy pigment, it's almost black, but it's not as black as the black color that you can get from Brusho. And one of the things that I did to get this sky to be blended is to make sure this top section is just completely fully and entirely saturated. A previous one that I had tried and that didn't work really well, I had used the bleach in the sky and I ended up with this weird white streak across it. So if you're gonna use bleach in a sky and you don't want a harsh edge, then I would suggest just saturating it with water and then dropping in a line of bleach so that it doesn't end up overwhelming it because that bleach is pretty strong. But the 50% mix I'm gonna use in the bottom section because there is a place where I want to have this vast difference in color. So now you can see that I've got this beautiful sky above and I wanna add my trees in there. This is still super saturated. This whole technique requires so much water on it, it takes forever to dry, which is good when you're gonna add something in like the trees. So I wanted to define all the buildings by doing negative painting around the trees. And I took some of the olive green brusho and dropped it into a little puddle, added some water to it and it makes paint. So you can use these as regular paints as well. But just remember, these are not paints that lift unless you're gonna use something like bleach with them. So once you get the color down, it's kind of going to stay there. It'll move and it'll burst and some edges may soften, but you have to be real careful. And if you're going to try to use it for painting like this, just know that once it's there, you're gonna to have to do some heroic work in order to get it to lift up, unlike regular watercolor. 
but it's a really fun medium to work with because it does all these really cool bursts of different colors and it it's just a surprise. I think that's one of the things I love about any of the water mediums is that they are a surprise with however things come out. So now I'm going to fill the bottom section with water and just kiss the very, very edge of the horizon line there. Just very, very barely so some of that color comes down and it's going to help me to tie the sky to the ground and make all that seem like it's one big scene. And I'll go back and add the buildings in later. If I were painting this in watercolor, I might do the buildings sooner than this step just to make sure that the buildings don't end up feeling as cut out as they look right now, but I do have plans for how to make them work a little bit better. So now I'm gonna add some of the yellow ochre and I'm adding it in a little bit of a horizontal at the top, but then starting to go into some angles, which is going to add some perspective to it. Instead of just being a flat horizontal perspective, you get the sense that you're standing at a distance and then these buildings are getting further and further away as the field trails back. So I'm, I'm using this big old flat brush, which I can get away with because I'm not really painting any detail on this. And with brusho, I find that it's really hard to get details. So you might as well not bother. Give in and use a really big brush. And this one allows me to make little cut lines here along the horizon line so I can make a nice straight-ish horizon for the top of the grass and the bottom of the buildings. I've added in for the first time here some powdered olive green and then a little bit of the powdered gray, just so I bring colors in from the top, but the powdered green is gonna give me a little different look than everything else so that the foreground is more special because it has green that isn't just painted on. But as I started spraying, watch the mess that is made here on the left. That is one of the things that happens if you use too many brush oak colors at once because they turn into mud. And if you know anything about color theory, we could go into why that is in this particular instance, but I got the bleach out. I kind of wanted to make this mess in the first place so I could see what the bleach did. I hadn't tested it on the olive green, so this was a little bit of a risky move, but look how it turns that olive green into incredible turquoise. That's just gorgeous. So it doesn't go all the way to white all the time. It, it'll go all the way to white in portions. Some colors react differently. Some colors just burst out into something else that's beautiful and some of them go to white and it really depends on how you use it, how much water's there, etc. So play around with it and see what you might be able to come up with that would work. For the buildings and the barns and things, I'm going to use just a little brush with the paints already mixed in the palette. That's going to give me more control. You could, if you wanted texture in them, just paint with water and then drop some of the pigment in but I wanted this part to be the one portion under control in this whole painting because everything else is kind of chaos, beautiful chaos and planned chaos, but chaos nonetheless. And when I make these brush strokes, I'm going out into the area on either side of each building and pulling in a little color. If there's green there, I want a little bit of that green to pop into the houses. If there's a little bit of gray there, I want that to pull in just so these don't feel like they're stickers on top of the whole painting. They're already going to have that effect just because I wanted these roofs to be nice and white, but I didn't want that to be increased by, you know, painting them a different color. If I were to try to paint red barns or anything like that, that would stand out in this, and I wanted the colors to feel very natural, like everything goes together. So I mixed a thicker type of color, dark color, using some of the gray to make the windows and things because I wanted to have some little dark details in here. Not a lot, and I'm not trying really specifically to draw every window in every building, but just enough that there feels like there's been some attention given to them because the rest of the spectacular scene and all of that amazing brush is where the focus is for the painting itself. The buildings are just an, an add-on, but I wanted them to have a little bit of love. I added in a little bit of the olive green into that thick black mix, or the, the gray mix, so that I could then add really contrasting trees around some of the buildings. Because you can see, as the water kept moving down, because it never dried, none of this has been heat set as of yet. This is just happening 
on the fly, the fact that it didn't dry means I can still go back in and paint some soft trees. And these will have soft edges on top. They'll be less soft because the paper is starting to dry out some. It's not going to run as much as it did the first time. And it's also probably not going to run down the page either because down the page is already got the bleach pushing downward out of it. So it's not going to want to suck that, that olive out of the trees. So I went back in after I finished with a couple of strokes just to pull in some more color onto the roofs, that sort of thing. So they didn't feel quite so stark and white, but just a little tiny bit there. And that was about all I needed to do. And it came out like a really fun, crazy, wild painting. And that is one of the things I love about Brusho is it just does crazy things that you don't expect it to do. If you're interested in more on Brusho, there is a whole post over on my blog with tons of Brusho information on it. All of my past Brusho videos, including how I swatch and sort out my Brusho bottles, the little caps that I put on them, etc. So you can check all that out in the link that's down in the description. And that's it for me. I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.